Hey everybody, it's Warren. Uh, I'm back with another uh, tutorial. Uh, it's been a while, uh, I, I acknowledge. Um, two years by my count. Uh, lots has happened since then. You may notice um, my, my long, glorious, flowing locks are gone. We, we have a, a wonderful Cantonese lady in San Francisco um, who didn't understand what I asked for um, in the barber's, uh, barber's chair. Um, to thank for that. Um, the other thing, what else? I lost some weight. Uh, started biking a lot, you know, eating eating good food and all that. Um, and I really apologize, ladies, but I got a girlfriend. Um, oh, what else? Uh, so we also had some workshops. Uh, I taught some workshops in LA and uh, in New York. And those were really awesome. Thank you to everybody who <clears throat> came out, and thank you to everybody who subscribed because you're like supporting me, and like I feel it. I feel like the friend, love, and the music connection. Um, Tom York, let's get to the point. Tom York came out with a new album, and um, this particular song, guess again, is is really cool. Like it got me real excited because it seems relatively simple in that there aren't that many parts, but uh, there's a lot going on if you look into the music theory stuff, which we're going to get to later. I'm going to start on piano, and then we're going to eventually uh, go to a little bit of guitar, just depending on how you want to uh, play along. Um, and it's in the key of D flat, but it's like D flat major or D flat minor. Don't know really what to call it because it's sort of a hybrid scale, which we're talking about. Um, we're going to talk about in a bit. But the very first chord is a D flat major and you have this D flat and your A flat which is your root and your fifth in the left hand and then you have a D flat and an F right there. Okay, that's your right hand. Pretty simple chord and you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Happens on the and of two. That this next chord, okay? Now it looks like an E major, and we could call it an E major, but in the context, for reasons embedded into music theory, really deeply embedded, um, this is actually going to be called an F flat major. Okay? So you got your E, aka F flat, and your B, aka C flat, E, aka F flat again. And 
that is just what guitarists like to call a power chord. It's a chord with a root and a fifth, and in this case an octave is just another root, but you don't have a third. So there you go, and you're gonna, in context, it's gonna be like this one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. for the first part, okay? Now, um, for the music theory nerds out there, like, why are we calling this the key of D flat if you've got all these other flats and double flats going on? Well, the, the short answer is it's because it's all about the relationships in the scale. And um, if we were to call this D flat chord a C sharp chord, for instance, this would really mess things up for us because C sharp has like eight sharps. That's really, really complicated, and that would make everything else even more complicated. Um, but once we go from a D flat major to this chord, okay, in the key of D flat major, we have one, two, three. Normally the three in the scale, of the do, re, mi in a major scale would be an F, but instead we replace it with this. So you can't really replace an F with an E. You replace an F with an F flat, and that's how music theory looks at relationships between chords. So this would be called an F flat because it's replacing the, th the chord that normally occurs on the third degree of the scale, which would be this particular chord right here. This is a minor chord, but instead what we're getting is we're getting this one. So I'll show you what it would sound like if I were to play the song in the key without any alterations. seem more like a minor scale okay so we had a major scale going in thinking about that and how would we solo over this or what melodies would we play over the sing over this and all of a sudden we have this chord and these two chords and you have those chords sounding more like a minor scale if you know minor scales those two chords fit right in so how can we have a minor scale and a major scale sort of going on in the same riff and switching back and forth between the two. Well, this is not the only example. Okay? We have uh, other songs that uh, fit with this example, right? We have this. Uh So Pyramid Song also does the same thing, uh, where you have a major chord on the first degree of the scale, and it starts to use other scales as it goes along, and then it kind of comes back. For those of you who want to know about that, it's, <laughs> it's a major scale, but it's also mixed with Phrygian, okay? So there's some funky stuff going on in that one, if you want to go look it up on Wikipedia. But anyway, we have your major, and then minor, minor. That's the music theory section, all right? Pretty mind-blowing. Uh, very rewarding if you want to go into it. 
um, and do your own personal study. Or hey, take Skype lessons with me or Google Hangout lessons with me. We'll, we'll get into even more awesome stuff that lets you deconstruct everything you love in the songs that are, are, um, are on your playlist, you know? Uh, so the next part, it goes like this, okay? It's gonna go. Like that. Pretty easy, right? So what we got is a. Right there, we've got a C flat, okay? Because this is another thing that we take from the minor scale. It's a C flat, aka a B, and F sharp, aka a G flat. And you just do that on your left hand. And then you do this. E flat, F, and I've got the pedal hold the the pedal held down the whole time. And then G flat, A flat, and then I let go of the pedal and I play G flat, and then I play this octave lower. So I'll play that again. section where he goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Now count it again. Two, three, four, left hand, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. You go back to the beginning section. Now this is really interesting here because if you listen closely to the rhythm of these notes coming in, it sounds really loosey-goosey. Now that's that's a technical term uh, that uh, us music teachers use, loosey-goosey. Just kidding. Um, it's really kind of not precise in terms of how you're counting the four beats. And this is interesting because you have a very specific like, uh, programmed beat. I heard Colin Greenwood program this beat for this song. And it's a funky beat, but it's like very, very loop oriented. It's very, uh, it's very rigid in terms of its four beat structure. It doesn't ever stray from that. Um, but once you get to this section, this is kind of like there, and then you kind of do this one late, and this one, and then this is lazy, kind of sound like that. It's really weird. And if you notice in my cover version, I'm not really like paying super, super close attention to like trying to execute it on the beat because I'm just being loosey goosey with it as well. And this is interesting because from a songwriting perspective, you can see that really this was just, I'm guessing Tom playing a lot of different spacey, like relaxed kind of cool piano chords and vibes and he was just like feeling it and then him and Nigel got in the studio decided to cut it up and and although it didn't fit Colin's beat perfectly what it does is it lends a sort of like a contrast between something very rigid and something very human something very like not mechanical you know and so you have this interplay it's real common if you listen to you know Flying Lotus if you listen to you know, other artists out there, um, one of them, Sun Glitters, back in the day, I used to really like Sun Glitters. But yeah, that's kind of what you got going on with this section. Lucy, Lucy, I set up the scale and then an octave and then back. And that's pretty much the entire thing up until the synth part comes in. And you'll hear this part come in at the end, and it's not going to be on piano, but I'll show you how to play it on piano. It's real simple. It's two notes at a time, and it goes... that uh, you can see it's a companion to this tutorial and <laughs> I'm not gonna like misquote myself right now so you can just look at that uh, transcription it'll tell you exactly what time those notes come in so you have this one is a B D flat again and a F and it goes down to the F flat and the A flat 
and then your B double flat. Sorry. <laughs> B double flat and D flat. And then you do your A flat and your C flat there. So this is your, it's kind of like a D flat major, and then you go to a F flat major, and then you go to a B, B double flat major, and then your A flat minor. And then once you do that, you can kind of see it's going to be pretty easy to do that on the guitar as well. So that ending section on the guitar would, would, would sound pretty cool, especially if you're like into maybe electric guitar and like doing like um, some sort of volume pedal swell or, or whatever. Um, so especially, you know, with the, with the beat accompanying you in the back, you can really do a cool cover version of this. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it there. And what's one, one more thing that's worth noting, okay, is when we get here is we have this uh, major chord and then you have the, this weird minor scale thing which continues to here. Now, what we would normally see here in a major key would be but we continue the minor theme. This one, that's a the minor scale. So again, this song has major elements and minor elements. And if you understand those two keys and the chords that go with them, you can start to really get an appreciation for like what's happening here, where the song is, is sort of leading you one way, but then it like replaces what you expected with like this other major chord here, or this minor chord where you would have expected a major chord, just because like we've heard songs that are written in major keys and heard songs that are written in minor keys, but what Tom York is doing here is it's kind of like playing with harmony. Like um, maybe he's not even aware. I don't know. But uh, it, it's like this really cool like way to subvert the listener's expectations. So if you're into songwriting, you know, study scales, you know, and then try to get into sort of the mind of, of uh, the great songwriters out there. But uh, that's pretty much it for this piano part. And uh, I'm going to see you in the next section. Okay. And there you go. Uh, so this is the way to play the main riff on the guitar. And so the first chord I'm going to show you is the D flat major. There are two ways to play D flat major that are kind of relative to, like relevant to the song. This one will come later as the higher voicing D flat, but we're going to do the low, lower voicing first. This is X, 4, 3, 1, X, X. And these three strings that you're fretting, we're just going to pluck those three with your right hand plucking hand there for you lefties and you're gonna hit them simultaneously okay it's kind of a tricky shape if your pinky's not very strong but you know get used to it <laughs> uh, so you got that one two three four one two three we're gonna do this it's like a stretch again but you have this e aka f flat major chord and to get this hammer on, we have to do this stretch here, okay? And you're going to do a 0, 2, 4. And that's with your index and your middle. And then you're going to do a hammer after you pluck all three. And so this pinky, again, if your pinky is weak, you know, you've got to buff up your pinky. And then you do a little hammer real quick. So you go 1, 2, 3. Sorry. A chord, aka the B double flat chord. Um, so this is X zero two one zero X, and you're gonna do four strings this time with your plucking hand. Two three four one two, and on beat two you switch 
to this A power chord, which is X022, two, two, XX. And in context, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 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 Part is a little weird because you know your guitar doesn't go down as low as the piano, but you're gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Come back. Okay, so what is that? That's single note B right here, aka a C flat in this key. X two X X X. Okay, just that single note, and then this note comes in while you're holding the next note, which is a first fret fourth string. Okay, and then you do this third fret fourth string, all while you're holding down the fifth string second fret, and then pinky on the fourth fret. Okay, for fourth string, and then you can pluck your bass note again just to keep it ringing out. Then you do your first fret of the third string there. Okay, so I'll go again. Fifth string, fourth string, fourth string again, fourth string again, and then fifth and third together. Okay, first fret, and then, and then you just do your fourth string, fourth fret, and your sixth string, second fret. And those are your G flats and octave, and then. Now when we get to the end, um, we're just going to do this. So what is this? The D flat major, X4, 6, X6. And then we're going to do an E major, aka F flat major, 0, 2, X1, XX. And then an A major, otherwise known as a B double flat. X zero two X two and then you're gonna do four six X four and that's your A flat minor A flat minor and I use my thumb here just because it's a little easier for me but if you want you could play it like with your index your pinky in your middle maybe that's another fingering of that shape and these are open voicings meaning you have your root in the bass, your fifth in the middle, and then your third up top, an octave higher, which is actually a tenth. For all you music theory people, this is an open voicing. These are all open voicings, and they're really nice, because the open voicings are the same. a chord because it sounds a little bit less compact than your kind of tight root fifth voice and you have a root fifth so there you go I, I don't know if I could have packed any more music theory into that one without going too far but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, I hope you like the cover um, the cool thing about this particular one is like I worked really hard I, I put maybe like at least 12 or maybe 15 hours into uh, trying to figure out exactly how to deconstruct the album version and like make my own beat and you know play with some synth bass and you know come in with a synth keyboard and like these little hi-hat things that Colin introduced into the song these quirky quirky um, elements in the programming of the song and uh, I would love to, to share it with you guys um, but I not sure of the legality of that um, but you know maybe uh, you the least we could do is is just uh, you know at least let let you know that like I do put a lot of hours into um, the educational material you see on, on this uh, channel so if you'd like to take me up on lessons it's like this but even better
because it's one on one. If we do group lessons, we can do some really awesome structured um, theory and ear training stuff in a group on Google Hangouts. So reach out to me. Um, if you found any of this material helpful to you in your journey as a musician, I do these first and foremost to just inspire and connect with people, but also to find students. And if you find this stuff helpful, you know, feel free to, um, you know, send me a note or, you know, even I have a, a crazy like little Coinbase account. You can leave me a tip if you use Bitcoin or, or um, PayPal at warren at warrenlane.com. Coinbase is coinbase.com slash Warren Music. But, uh, you know, um, any, anything uh, is, I, is much appreciated. And I hope to make many, many, many more of these very soon, um, jumping back in. So uh, thank you again, uh, warm music friends, and uh, hopefully see you again soon. Bye.